An opportunity like this comes only once in a lifetime. I will succeed. Everyone needs a way to express themselves. Poetry. Art. Dance. Writing. Some kids I know are left alone, but we, we have big buddy. I'm, I think as a youth worker, you learn to love those moments when you walk into a room full of kids and it's the first day of the program and, and there's a lot of youth who are closed off, shut down, arms crossed, don't want to be here because you say inside of yourself, oh goody, <laughs> this is going to be fun to watch this situation change. I'm really excited and proud of the programs that we provide. We have three programs. Um, we have a program called Wordplay teen writing project which is a poetry and literary arts program um, the, another program that we provide is um, the T steps program which is for middle school students they come after school every day Monday through Friday we have about 60 kids enrolled in that program they um, can major in one of four different major areas our majors are athletics visual arts rhythm band and dance and they also receive academic tutoring and other academic support, and they also receive mentoring and personal and social skills development in that program. Then we have a program called Team 360 University that draws students together from five high schools in the area at the Teen Center. And those teens come together. They can also, they have majors in this program where they can major in digital media, dance, theater, or athletics, and they also receive academic support services, mentoring. My full name is Chancellor Skidmore. Uh, everybody around here calls me Zero, and I'm the program manager for uh, the Wordplay Teen Writing Project here at Big Buddy. A big part of our programming is the in-school writing workshops. We go to uh, different high schools and middle schools, and we do our creative writing workshops in the classrooms with the teachers. We work with the teachers and their curriculum, lining up our curriculum with their grade level expectations. We also do uh, after school programming. We have a group of kids we call Word Crew. And every Thursday from 6.15 to 8.15, we have a writing workshop. It's a little more intense than the uh, workshops that we do in the schools because these kids are like the cream of the crop, so to speak. My name is Anna West, and I'm the director of teen programs at Big Buddy. Teen programs serve young people grades 6 through 12. So generally, the young people that we serve are 11 through 18 or 19 years old. Teen programs is the newest part of Big Buddy. Big Buddy's been around for 29 years, and um, we have traditionally served elementary age students. We started to serve middle school students about six years ago by doing a program called T-Steps, which evolved out of the, just a the need for our fifth graders as they were graduating from elementary programs. We began to say, hey, now what? You know, are we going to help them transition into middle school? And um, you know, a lot of youth organizations really don't serve middle and high school students. Um, it's a lot more difficult to serve middle and high school students because those students can actually vote with their feet, we say, you know, they can choose whether or not they want to be a part of an after school program or not. So you're really challenged with middle and high school programs to offer great opportunities for teens. They tend to be very underserved in our community because a lot of organizations are not up for that challenge. I'm Jody McKenzie and I'm the contracts manager at Big Buddy Program. I always tell this story. Um, um, in 2004, I was um, a program instructor and we would go into the schools at 2, and we'd start tutoring at 3.30. But between 2 and 3.30, we'd help the teachers. And um, the class that I was assigned to was a kindergarten class. So I would pull this one student out, and he didn't know how to say his alphabet. So he couldn't, you know, say it all uh, at the same time, and he didn't know how to sound out the words. So we would work on that, and we worked on that for about a year. And then that summer, um, I was in his class, um, as an assistant to the teacher and every day we'd go over reading and just different things like that and sounding out words and then one day I got to um, got to work and Miss um, Sharon who actually was my supervisor at the time was like I have something to show you she was like come see and I was like okay and so I went in and there was Byron in front of the class reading a book and I just broke down into tears and um, it was just so it warmed my heart because for so long, you know, you don't think that you're making an impact. And then all of a sudden, here's this child who a year before couldn't say his alphabet. He's reading a book in front of everyone. So it was just, woo. <laughs> yeah. My name is Sharon Thomas. I am the special initiatives manager for Big Buddy um, with the elementary programs. When I started Big Buddy, I was a site coordinator. Um, at Duke Rock Elementary, and I had about 150 children coming to the program. 
We did art enrichment, um, dance, choir, and of course we had the academic component. And I really enjoy working with the children. <laughs> they make me happy. One day of the mentor, the elementary students that participate in day of the mentor, they come from the elementary sites. So one of the students that I uh, recommended attend day of the mentor, he went on a tour of LSU's campus with the basketball team. And he came back and he said, I've been to college and I can't wait to go back. And it was just a simple tour of the college. He was able to tour with John Brady and some of the other players there. But that really made him happy. And now he's excited about going to college. Whereas before, LSU is right down the street, but they don't have the opportunities or the luxuries to go. Okay, my name is Jennifer Watson, and I am the director of mentoring here at the Big Buddy Program. The research shows that um, children who participate in mentoring are less likely to participate in negative activities that a lot of these children are exposed to. Our kids come from all types of backgrounds. Um, we feel it's very important for us to go to uh, the schools that aren't quote unquote high risk or, or inner city schools because the kids at those schools need to build community with the kids from the other sides of the track just like the kids from the other sides of the track need to build community with them. We view all kids as being at risk um, because they're youth Therefore, they're more vulnerable in the world. They don't have as, as many rights as adults have, and, and, and so they all need guidance, no matter how um, affluent they may be. We work with about 600 kids per month. This year, we're in uh, 10 schools, and so that's, that's 30 kids in each classroom, and we're doing workshops uh, once a week, at least, at each school. Uh, that's not counting the kids in the after-school program, and that's not counting the kids that, uh, that we also work with during uh, the All City Poetry Slam Festival, which is uh, this annual huge event which schools put together poetry slam teams that compete. And uh, we do finals at the Manship Theater uh, on finals night, but it's usually like a month-long festival. The festival impacts about 2,000 kids by itself. Most of the time, people feel that since we're here, we already have what we need, and it's not until organizations go away that they realize that hey there was a need for a big buddy so I think that's really one misconception that people have that we have everything but we have the children of course but we just don't have the financial backings we have a young lady named Jessica Cole um, who she's I, I would say since I've been here at Big Buddy I've seen the most the most change in Jessica the most growth she joined our poetry club at Glen Oaks High School that wordplay ran at the high school I personally didn't care. I think I just went just to get away from home because I hated being at home. And she, you know, wouldn't really write that much. Arms folded, you know, just kind of closed off. Her, her whole demeanor communicated, don't mess with me. I used to be bad. I used to cause it. Like, everybody used to follow me. So, like, whatever I tell everybody to do, they'll do it. And I just be looking at them laughing because I never did it or whatnot. Like, I just had kids do all kinds of evil stuff like that. The first six months of the program, kind of, you know, getting people pissed off at her. <laughs> and Zero Chancellor even pulled me aside at one point and said, this is a leadership program, Anna. <laughs> Why did you let her in? <laughs> and Zero, he was going crazy. He was like, Lord, what I'm going to do with this girl? And I used to be on the phone and stuff like that. He used to just get me. He just like, cut the phone off. After that, like, he wanted to let me go. Then that's when Anna was like, no, we can't. I said, I don't know, Zero, you know? I mean, I just, I can't explain it, but... You know, why is she reaching out? You know, why does she want to be here? And, um, you know, there, there's got to be something really meaningful for her in this. So then me, Anna starts me, Anna starts spending like more time with each other. Then I start using my skills for good and start leading people in the right direction. And like, I like, like if they tell her to be quiet, nine times ten, they wouldn't listen to them. So I just like, hey, everybody just be cool. They'll listen to me and stuff like that. So it all worked out for the best. It was actually true that she really did have a passion for poetry, and that's really why she did sign up for the club. But that wouldn't have been evident, you know, in, if you just hadn't believed, gone on the faith that she's in poetry club because she wants to be here. Not only is she now a phenomenal writer, but she's also um, developed the, a lot as a person uh, through the program and uh, through participating in that very positive culture. Big Buddy changed me because at first I, pers I probably wouldn't even came to college. I probably wouldn't probably didn't even care about college rather. I was just chilling. I used to do a lot of undercover things that I shouldn't have done, but I did them. But once I got in the program and started seeing the adults care about me and adults listen to me and like whatever I say mattered. And at first, you know, I was taught like, don't say this, don't say that, don't speak your mind, all this. But when I got in the Big Buddy program, it's like I see in the world 
a whole different, like I seen adults that care, adults that want to hear what I got to say, which made it positive. It made me just stop doing all the bad things that I was doing, start doing, you know, the good stuff. Our approach to instruction um, is very much about uh, mentoring more than, we, we try to not have a, a very uh, separated relationship such as me seeing myself as the teacher and them as the student. Um, it's more about us building a culture of writing. So we teach the kids that they are writers. That we, we teach them to claim that, that title in describing themselves and we treat them as writers. So when I walk into a room, I'm, I'm walking into a room of fellow writers and so it's writer to writer, not, not teacher to student per se. It's just that I'm a more experienced writer, and, and they, they recognize that. And so I have moral authority in our conversations. If there was no Big Buddy, where would all these children be? Um, they might be in the streets. You know, some might be dead. You know, it, it's, it's that, you know, I think it makes that much of an impact. You know, people might say, oh, you know, I can't believe she said some might be dead. But I think if there, weren't, there wasn't a Big Buddy, you know, that is an alternative to what you know what could be you know what could happen they might get involved in drugs they might you know these kids come from so many different backgrounds and so many different neighborhoods that you know without this after school program and you know when we have them that's the high time of crime among you know among kids so they're in a program doing their homework learning positive things and they're not on the streets and they're not at home by themselves you know while their parents are at work I could have been anywhere at any time. I could have been another child in the system. I could have been posted on the block with Glocks. I could have been in the graveyard. I could have been selling dope. I could have been a high school dropout. I could have not made it to college.